common task for portal administrators after the initial install is to do a database transfer. In this video, I will demonstrate doing a database transfer on HCL Portal 9.5 CF181 to IBM DB2 11.5. I will perform the transfer with a portal instance running in a Docker container, but the process is exactly the same when running portal outside of Docker. And while the steps I show are using Portal 9.5, same steps can be done on Portal 8.5 and 9. Just refer to the portal system requirements to ensure you use a supported database software version for your HCL portal environment. Now, before I begin, I wanted to mention the portal step-by-step -step cluster guide. This is a great reference resource when installing portal and chapter two explains the database transfer process. While the configuration wizard makes this process pretty straightforward, I do reference the guide myself whenever I'm unsure about an input or a step. Just understand that the steps and screens displayed in this guide and in the video are specific to the CF mentioned. As new CFs are released, the wording or steps might differ slightly. Okay, let's start. First, we need to start the configuration wizard server if it's not running already. Now that the server is up, we can access it via the host name on port 10202 slash HCL slash wizard. Note that prior to CF18, the path was IBM slash wizard. The credentials used are the ones specified during the portal install. For this environment, I will choose the standalone option, but if you're going to set up a cluster in your environment, you can choose the cluster option. Some of the input fields will already be pre-populated. Just ensure the info is correct before proceeding to the next step. Now I'm going to transfer to DB2, but just note that other database software options are available. For the other options, I will accept all the defaults, except my database is not hosted on the same server as Portal, and I need to enable Advanced Database Collation. For this environment, I won't be using a specific runtime database user. I will be using the default database names, but feel free to change as needed. Need to enter my database server host name, and my port is already set correctly. One note on the host name. If you're running portal on Docker, you need to start your container with the add host option so the portal server is able to reach the database server via the host name. On this screen, I put in my OWAS administrator ID and password. These were set during the portal install. The database information screen is where you'll enter most of the details. First, entering my database user ID and password. Next, I need the database URLs for each database. My practice is to write these out in a text editor and copy and paste into the input fields. The last two fields are pointed to my database drivers, which I will place in a folder named DB drivers under the WP underscore profile slash portal server directory. And a temporary directory will use for the collation steps. As you can see, 11 steps are needed for this database transfer. Note that some of these steps are manual, like the first step, which asks us to create the database user and groups. Now, depending on your OS, these steps will vary. I'm using Linux Red Hat and already have my database user created. 
So I just need to add the groups and then add the user to these groups using group add and user mod. Now that that is done, I can mark step one complete and move on to step two. Step two backs up property files, so I'll just run it. Step three is another manual step where I need to copy the database drivers to the portal server and then run a script to create the databases. For DB2, the drivers will be located under the Java directory where DB2 is installed. And I provided the location where I wanted to place the drivers in the previous screen so it's displayed in the instructions. Now a little movie magic and the directory and drivers are copied over. Now to download and run the script on the database server. Also on the previous screen, it asked me for a temporary directory to use. I will create it now and use it to upload the script. Now I'll change the permissions of the file and rename it to include the .sh and then start and run the script. Now that step three is done, I'll mark it complete and run step four to set up the databases. Once step four is complete, step five is another manual step I need to do because I chose to enable advanced database collation. Per the instructions, I need to stop portal, then copy some files from my portal server to the database server and run some commands. As portal is stopping, another bit of movie magic and the files are copied over. From the SQL lib function directory, I need to run this command. Note that I have to adjust the db2 home directory in the command to correctly point to my db2 user. Now from the temp directory, I need to modify and run the SQL file I copied over. I need to replace the schema placeholder to JCR, then save and close. Then I need to connect to the JCR database using the DB user and run the SQL. Once that's done, disconnect and restart DB2.
These next set of steps are to verify if the function was registered correctly. Now that the function is verified, the last set of steps is to create the custom properties listed here in the JCR resource environment provider using the WAS admin console. Once they're created, save the changes to the master configuration. With that done, I'll mark step five complete and then move on to step six, which is to stop the portal server. Step seven is a manual step to restart DB2. In step eight, we'll validate the database connection. Finally, step nine will perform the database transfer. Now that the database transfer is complete, step 10 will enable JCR to support large files. And the last step just restarts the portal server. Once that's done, the final test is to access portal and ensure you get the expected results. This concludes a video demonstrating how to perform a database transfer on HCL Portal 9.5.